Hello boys and girls, how are you doing this day? I am doing fine and I am so excited to be here so that I can teach you through this lesson. My name is Pastor Boni and allow me to take you through the lesson of today. But before that, let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this great day that you have given unto us. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you also for the gift of good health, mighty Father. I pray upon each and every child that is viewing me, every viewer that is viewing me, mighty Father. May you be with them. May they get something out of this lesson. It's in Jesus' name we pray this trusting and believing. Amen and amen. Yes, boys and girls, I am super excited to be here so that I can take you through the lesson. And today, what are we going to learn? We are going to learn about the attributes of God. Yes, that is what we've been doing during the month of May. So today I'm going to take you through a review of what really were we learning about the attributes of God. And remember I told you that the attributes of God, these are the characters of God. For example, when you say that God is loving, that is an attribute because God loves us. We have been told in the Bible that God loves us. Yes, so what did we learn through the month of May? I know, we, I, let me remind you, our first lesson was on the book of Judges and we learned on how God is almighty. Our God is almighty. And through these lessons, I remember I told you that we'll be having some hand motion for us to remember what we've been learning. So when I say that God is almighty, remember to always do like this because this, this shows that almighty, yes, this shows us that our God is almighty. When someone has this strength, it shows that this person is powerful. So our God is almighty and powerful. And how is God almighty and powerful? We go through the book of Judges, chapter 6 and 7, where we learn about a, a young man called Gideon. Yes, we have this person called Gideon. We know that the people of Israel had done bad things to God and God was not happy on the characters and the things that they were doing. So God said, one day when they repent, that God is going to send a judge who is going to be with them. And God sent Gideon to be the judge of this Israel. So one time they repented and asked God, God, please forgive us, forgive us, because they had the Midianites who were actually ruling over them. They took their food, they took their land, they took most of it. So one day an angel appeared to Gideon and told Gideon that God is going to use you. And Gideon was how, how now? I'm just, I'm just a young person. I'm not even famous. I'm not known. But God told Gideon that I'm going to use you so that you can help your people. You can help your people to win over the Midianites. So God told him to gather a lot of soldiers so that they can go and win the Midianites. So what did Gideon do? Gideon went and gathered 32,000 men. 32,000 strong men. But then God thought, when these people fight the fight, they'll think that they've won the battle by their own strength. And God did not want that. God wanted Gideon and the people of Israel to know that he himself is the God who is almighty. So he told Gideon, take your people to the river. Make them drink water by lapping. You know how the dog laps and drinks water? Yes, by licking it like this. No other. So he, Gideon was given an instruction by God to tell the people, his people to go and drink water from the river, but not to touch the water like this, but to lap it from the river. So when they went there, others were very fast to drink water in different ways, how God did not expect them to drink that water. So God told Gideon, I want you to eliminate the people that have not done the instruction the way you have asked them to, to take water. So many people were thrown out of the battle. Many, many soldiers were thrown out of that team. And imagine what? They only remained 300 of them. Imagine from 32,000 to 300 soldiers. So here we learn that God wanted to really show them that he is almighty. So Gideon was told by God that you're going to use these 300 men to fight the people of the Midianites. And this is what happened. They went for war. And they were told some to blow their trumpets and others were there to say that this is Gideon who is led by God. And they did that. And do you know what? They conquered the people. They conquered the people of the Midianites and they were all running away. We are told in the Bible that some ran in the south, others in the west. Others were confused what is happening. Truly, God is almighty and all powerful because 
only 300 men are the ones that conquered these Midianites. And there were so many. So we learned that God wanted to truly show these men, the men, the Israelites, that he himself is the one who is almighty, that they didn't win the battle because of their own strength, but they won the battle through God. You see how God is almighty? Wow, that is a wonderful thing. Then we go to the next lesson where we learned God is Alpha and Omega. So we said when we say almighty, we do like this because God is almighty. And here we learn that God is Alpha and Omega. I want you to stretch out your hand like this and like this to the end. Yeah, that shows that God is the first and the last. What does Alpha and Omega mean? It means the beginning and the end. Here we learn that in the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 to 18, we learn how God is the Alpha and Omega. We are told that in the beginning there was the Word and the Word was with God. So we are told even before, even before we were born that God was there, that God was the Word. Yes, God was the Word. And also we learn that even Jesus Christ himself was not born during the New Testament. No, that Jesus Christ himself was there in the beginning. Yes. So when I say Alpha and Omega, remember we are talking that God is the first and the last. So God was there in the beginning and has always been there throughout the time. How amazing is that? So we know that God is almighty. He helps, the, he helps Gideon and the Israelites to conquer the Midianites. We learn also that God is the Alpha and Omega. Yes, he's the first and the last. What an awesome thing to do. And yeah, we go to our third attribute. Now we've learned about two attributes so far. We've learned that God is almighty and all powerful. Number two, we've learned that God is the Alpha and Omega. Yes. And number three, I want you to guess. Though I can't hear you, just shout it loud. Yes, God is awesome. God is what? God is awesome. That's the third attribute. And how do we learn that God is awesome? We learn about the story of Moses and Aaron. Yes, I know some of you have heard about the plagues of the Bible. Yes, this is where we learn about that story. We learn that long, long time ago, we had this person called Abraham. And Abraham had his descendants. And one of the descendants was Joseph. But we learn that these people were captured, were captured in slavery by the Egyptians. But God wanted to deliver them from the slavery. So how do we learn that God is awesome? God told Moses and his brother Aaron, go and talk to Pharaoh. Go and tell him to release his people, to release your people so that you can be captive free. Because they were in captive, God asked them to go and tell Pharaoh to release his people, that these people that will be captive free. So when Aaron and Moses went to tell the Pharaoh that, they didn't believe. So God instructed Moses, I want you to tell your brother Aaron to remove his stick. Yes, he removed his stick. And then he was told to put his stick on the river Nile. To put his stick on the river Nile. And what happened? We know that it, the river Nile turned to blood. The water turned into blood. And now what will happen when the water turned into blood? The fish that was in, the other animals that were inside the sea, the river, sorry, they could not breathe, they could not live, so they died. And how will these uh, Egyptians take water? Well, the water was blood. But then, that was only the first plague. We learn about the second plague. And the second plague was the frogs. We had millions and millions of frogs that came out and started distracting people. But that did not make Pharaoh stop, did not make Pharaoh set the captives free. And the third one, we had there, Lice, were, they were everywhere, everywhere. And then number four, we had fleas that were everywhere and they were distracting. And then number five, we had diseases on the livestock. These are the different plagues that God brought to these people of Egypt. That's how we learn that God is awesome. Every time that I say God is awesome, I want you to remember that indeed our God is awesome. So those are three attributes that we've learned about. God is almighty, God is Alpha and Omega, God is awesome, yes. And what about the fourth one? The fourth one we learn about compassion, God being our compassion. Oh, do you know what compassion means? Yes, this means for someone to be compassionate, this means you care about the needs of others. And in the Bible, we talk about, uh, we talk about the people of Nineveh, where God, they were they didn't do what was the right thing 
and God was compassion to them. How was God compassion to the people of Nineveh? By sending his son, Jesus Christ. We are told that when we have Jesus, we have our salvation with us. We can always ask God for forgiveness. So the people of Nineveh had sinned upon God and God wanted to really punish them. Even you, you know, when you sin upon your leaders, when you're told to do something and you don't do it, that is a sin and you're punished. So the people of Nineveh were being punished. But what did God do? God is compassionate because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to die for you and for me. Everyone is a sinner. So God is our compassion God. And the last one, so we've, so far we've done four. We've learned that, number one, God is, yeah, God is almighty. Number two, God is Alpha and Omega. Number three, God is awesome. And number four, God is compassionate. And how do we do compassionate? Let's hug ourselves. Or if you have someone there, you can hug them and tell them, remember that God sent Jesus Christ, his only son, just to come on earth to die for our sins. That's the same thing that God did to the people of Nineveh. And the last one, the last one that we did is that God is our deliverer. And that brings me to the end of this lesson. I am so happy that I've got to tell you through and the review of the month of May. So we've learned that God is almighty. Thank you. We've learned that number two, God is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Number three, God is awesome. And number four, we've learned that God is compassionate. And the last one, we've learned that God is our deliverer. So God delivered the people of Israel through Moses and they delivered. And the hand motion is like this. Yes, God delivers. God has delivered us and delivered the people of God. So before we finish, I would like to remind you it's time for giving. And giving is an act of worship. Let's remember to give in our pay bill number that is written down here, 567935. We give through our pay bill number that is written on our screen, 567935. And that brings me to the end of this lesson, boys and girls. I hope that you've enjoyed and you have picked something. As you go through this week, remember to have one attribute that we have learned. Show one attribute to your friend. Show love, show compassionate, show how God is almighty in your life. Isn't it, boys and girls? Yes, and God will be glorified. Thank you. Let's pray as we finish. Father, we want to thank you for this great day. We want to thank you that you're an awesome, you're the first and the last. Mighty Father, you're a compassionate God. You're a deliverer. Mighty Father, you're an awesome God. We thank you for how you have been in our lives. So as I pray, I pray for each and every viewer. May you be with them. May you keep them safe. And as we meet the next week, we won't forget to give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray this trusting and believing. Amen and amen. That's for it, boys and girls. Bye-bye.